Hello, Heavy DIYers and Woodworkers, Mayanna here with Heartwood Art. And today we're going to do part three of a three-part series in how to make this super simple circle cutting jig for your trim router. It's so easy, but I wanted you to have all of the details. Now, in parts one or two, we were working with a much bigger board, and today we're going to cut it out down to size. And then we're also going to test the center point adjustment. And then we're gonna mount this to the board that we wanna cut the circle out of because there are tricks that are really going to help you with that as well. And then we're gonna cut out our circle and I'll show you some tips for getting accurate cuts. So let's dive in. Hey, if you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come over and visit me at heartwoodart.com for more tips and tricks just like this and to see the whole series. Okay, let's get going. Now it's time to cut that jig down to its final measurements. If you made your jig out of plywood, you'll want to take a couple of extra steps for cutting. Plywood is bad about splintering on the edge, so you may want to score a line with a utility knife on the pretty face or top side. Then turn it pretty face down for cutting. Let's sand our jig. Use rough sandpaper to smooth the cut edge of the jig, and then smooth the center slot on both sides of the board. Now you can take a long strip of sandpaper and scrub it lightly, shoe shine fashion, on the inside slot. Just don't be too aggressive as you don't want to widen that slot. Now it's time to get familiar with using the slot and your hardware stack for mounting your jig to the board that you want to cut. First, I put a fender washer on the bolt and then stuck that into the slot. And on the top side, I placed another fender washer and then my locking washer. And finally, I screwed in the wing nut to hold it all securely. Test to ensure that the hardware moves freely in the slot and then take it partially apart for the next test. Now it's time to mount the jig on the board to be cut. And I used a piece of scrap wood for this first mount and cut test. First, you have to make the two holes for the center point bolt and for the router bit. Get a drill bit the same size as your hardware and cutting bit, and for me that was a quarter inch. Drill out that center point hole, and then for the hole where the router bit will go through, carefully align the side of the drill bit so that the outside of the bit is on the inside of the circle edge. Now I found laying the trim right now, I found laying the trim router down on its side made it way easier to tighten up that center point stack and ensure that the end of the slot where the router bit will be lines up with the hole that you drilled on the inside of the circle. Now, use a wrench to hold the bolt and tighten the stack as far as you can. It has to be super tight not to slip as you go around the circle cutting it. Now it's time to make our first cut. The trim router with the battery is pretty heavy and the board I'm cutting is only half inch plywood and can be bowed. So instead of clamping the board to be cut to the edge of my bench, I decided that my workmate was a better option. This allowed me to support both sides of the board to be cut so there would be no bowing. Now you could also use a sacrificial board underneath the whole board to be cut, but I found this really heated up the tip of the bit too much. And I found that trying to push the router through the wood to be cut was not the best method. It put way too much pressure on the screws holding the router to the jig. And yes, it's a little hard to spin. Here's a tip. I found using my other hand to spin the jig while simply holding the router gave the best result. Now if you push on the router at all, push a little toward the outside. If you push toward the inside, you will likely move the jig down the slot and start cutting further toward the inside of the circle, meaning that you'll start shortening the radius and begin cutting a spiral. So go slowly so that you don't heat up the bit too much. And remember, it's just a trim router and doesn't have as much power as a corded standard router, so it can't cut as fast. And if you smell burnt wood, you may be going too fast and the bit is really heating up. Now there are two reasons why you need to stop halfway through and then three quarters of the way through. First, you need to check your radius. Turn off the router and check that your center stack is still tight. Back up the router and check that it's still cutting on the inside of your circle. If there's an issue, make adjustments. 
if all is well, finish the cut. Now, my first cut or two, I had to be careful how I pushed the jig around, else it started slipping from the preferred radius. You know, it may take you cutting a couple of test circles to find your groove with it, literally. Second, you want to keep in mind that you're cutting out the piece of the wood that your jig is mounted to. You know, I stopped at the three-quarter mark and moved the circle of the cutout board onto the far side of my workmate so that the circle itself would be supported as I finish that cut. Now keep in mind that your jig is mounted to a piece of wood that is being cut out and may become too unstable to support the jig as you near the end of the cut. I chose to remove the jig and put the base back on my trim router. And then I freehand cut the last inch of the circle. That way, I could ensure that I kept the jig level and that the circle could simply fall out. And there you have it, a clean cut circle with your trim router. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this three part series on how to make the circle cutting jig. Be sure to come over and visit me at heartwoodart.com for more tips and tricks and I'll see you in the shop.